When it comes to exploring the variety of games released over the years, it's seeing the early entries, the ones which may not have necessarily defined a genre, but had sub-contribution in unique ways to making it come about. Whilst flight simulator and air combat games during the 8-bit days grew and evolved on home computers primarily, there were always entries elsewhere which would offer their own contributions. Like F-16 Fighter, an early release for the Master System. This is Beyond the Scanlines, a series focusing on interesting games on classic computing and gaming platforms. F-16 Fighter didn't debut on the Master System though. In fact, its original release was for the MSX line of computers, where it was developed by Nexa Corporation and published in both Japan and Europe in 1984. This Master System conversion would be handled by Sega themselves with release in 1986. As with its MSX predecessor, it had taken the name F-16 Fighting Falcon in Japan, and also with its US release, whilst in PAL regions it had retained the classic F-16 Fighter title. Unsurprisingly, you take control of the F-16 Fighting Falcon, taking to the skies to engage in a series of dogfights against the MiG-25. Your first choice is to select your starting level. As you'll progress through the game, the challenge wraps up in both the number of enemies you'll need to take out, but also the skill levels the pilots offer. Your F-16 is armed, both with a cannon as well as heat-seeking missiles. Whilst your cannon is refilled to have the same amount of starting ammo for each mission, your missile load will increase as you progress through the game. Using your cannon is as simple as closing to within 20 units of an enemy, lining them up in your sights and then opening fire. They'll take several hits to go down, though knowing if your shots are actually connecting to cause damage isn't entirely clear at times. Your missiles on the other hand are for long range engagement, and Whilst using one can successfully take an enemy out on contact, success isn't necessarily guaranteed when using them. As enemy fighters carry electronic countermeasures, and they are not afraid to use them, it's always tense watching the time to impact slowly count towards zero as you've launched one, only to see the missile intercepted and wasted. Especially because you've only got a few to hand. The enemy MiGs carry the same weapons as you, so you're going to be under threat of them responding in kind. Thankfully, you've got electronic countermeasures as well, which gives you a chance to intercept any missiles launched your way. When all the threats have been taken down, you'll be rearmed and taken to the next level, showing the number of fighters you'll now need to engage. The most unique aspect to F-16 Fighter really is its control scheme. Where most console flight games were played with a single controller, F-16 Fighter requires you to connect two of them to your master system to play it properly. The first controller is primarily for controlling your fighter, with the directional pad or stick used to pitch and bank the aircraft. The one button is used to toggle which of your weapons you're going to use, and the two button will handle firing it. The second controller offers multiple functions, the D-pad or stick is used to control your speed. Moving it vertically will offer small adjustments to this, while moving it horizontally will apply much larger ones. Pressing the 1 button will cycle through all enemies in range, and the 2 button, pressing that activates your electronic countermeasures. In the event when things go pear-shaped, and your plane is critically damaged, pressing both 1 and 2 together will activate the ejection system, allowing you to end the game and see your final score. The visuals is kind of really where F-16 Fighter takes a downturn. Sure, both the title and game over screens offer some nice, bright visuals. Though once you take to the skies, this isn't really the case at all. The brighter palette in the Master System is not really used, and things look drab as a result. The instrumentation is plain, and simplistic. The ground is only represented by grid lines, and the enemy aircraft are displayed using simple monochromatic sprites. And if you know your Master System well, you'll know that's probably the only title which relies on the graphics modes added purely for compatibility with the SG-1000 console. 
And yes, if you know where I'm going here, it means that it won't play ball if you want to try and play it on your Mega Drive. So it does, quite frankly, look primitive. But the frame rate is consistent enough to be able to respond to controls properly. And honestly, when you're trying to get a missile lock on the enemy, the pacing doesn't really cause a problem as you become engrossed in that action of trying to get the lock to happen. Now, a similar set of circumstances also applies to the sound. The title and game over screens both feature a charming short unique ditty. But once you get into the main combat sequence, there is nothing here but sound effects. Though the effects for your cannon shots, explosions, hits and incoming missile alerts are all fine and do the job, the whine of your engines got tiresome very quickly. Now if anything, F-16 Fighter is a game out of its time. With its original MSX release, it was quite a peer to simplistic games such as Spitfire Ace, which offered simple dogfighting without really any serious simulation component. It compares well to those kinds of games. But even a year could be a long period of time. And with it taking probably two years for F-16 Fighter to get its proper Western release on the Master System, things had evolved significantly. Especially on the home microcomputer front where games like Cascade's Ace, Digital Integration's Fighter Pilot, and of course, Microprose's F-15 Strike Eagle, all introduce simulation elements to varying degrees. So these days, F-16 Fighter is probably best seen as a curio, particularly because of its legacy. The developers of the original MSX version, Nexa Corporation, would merge with Spectrum Holobyte and form Sphere Inc. Sphere would release the first in the Venerable Falcon flight simulation series in 1987, a series which would become very highly regarded with its later PC-based installments released during the 1990s, particularly from Falcon 3, which had great expansion possibilities, and Falcon 4, which, more than 20 years after its original PC release, still continues to be upgraded and enhanced by its community. Consequentially, it's kind of hard to recommend F-16 Fighter for anything more than a casual blast. The combat mechanics are enjoyable enough, but the game shows you everything it has to offer right from its first mission, and so there isn't really much of a reason to go back to try it again after a few plays. If anything, it is worth trying out, if only to see where a legendary combat flight simulation series just happened to get its start. Which of course leads to the end of another episode. If you enjoyed this look at a semi-obscure title, why not leave a thumbs up and tell your friends about it? Perhaps it stirred some curiosity or some nostalgia, and if it has, jump down into the comments and perhaps leave some thoughts. Finally, if you'd like to support what I'm doing for the show in a more direct way, do check out the Patreon page linked in the description below. Most importantly, however, thank you for taking the time out to enjoy another journey beyond the scan lines.